Two Sons Seen in Scotland. Original upload by Light Reader. And I'll read his original title and his text. Nibru, Second Son, Staggering. That was the title, and he reads, Second Son comes into play immediately. From there on, in it gets incredible. Not a second missed, apart from the narrative. Nevertheless, simply awesome and staggering. Creative Commons license made available. I'll how kind. Thank you, yes, light reader. Upload. Enjoy. Mention the light reader. Always pay the ferryman. Don't have much commentary to add, other than I guess I could say I made this into a widescreen version. You can see the uh, separation of the two objects, as it were, a little better. So the um, objects may seem a little more um, oval than they really are, but other than that, I just always like to fill up the screen. I'll put the links in the pull down if you want to see the original. And it is amazing what we're seeing. I have no idea if it is actual, if it's an actual object or some kind of lensing effect going on from a gravitational field or other celestial anomaly slash object. We're living in some amazing times. There's not too much to comment on. I might add some commentary here by Arizona, the Red Devil Planet guy. Also, don't forget to visit freedomslips.com for lots of good articles on preparedness and other good stuff. Other than that, take care and God bless. Enjoy the view for now. It looks like we got Arizona on the line. I'm just waiting for the big show to get started. Yeah, I know what you mean. I don't think uh, if, if uh, everything pans out here, I don't think they're going to be able to hide things too much longer. I think we already, there's a good possibility we already got a picture of it that they cannot hide without shutting it down. So, Well, that's the whole idea about uh, geoengineering the atmosphere. I mean, uh, you know, if you put enough crap up in the atmosphere, I like what that one guy said about uh, the uh, mercury particles or whatever the hell that was he was talking about in the atmosphere there, that... Uh, you know, they could broadcast a satellite in space and put on some kind of a, you know, Three Stooges movie or something for everybody to watch. I mean, that's that. this has got to be the most high-tech drive-in movie I've ever heard of. But it sounds cool to me, you know. I mean, uh, uh, I'll recognize Jesus when I see him. I don't think they're going to be able to fool me, but, you know, I'm sure there'll be a lot of people that'll be fooled. And uh, this baby's out there in the sky. They've been watching it. I watched it. And I can tell you, this thing has got so much trash coming around it. You know how we live in a solar system? We've got nine planets and a big sun. This right. thing has got seven planets and its own sun. But I believe that instead of having dirt on it like our planet does and water, I think this thing is just a big, uh, bright, reddish-orange iron ball because it's giving off all this red iron oxide dust out into the atmosphere. When we thought at first it was just a teeny little red speck of, of fuzzy red dust in the distance, but over the years as it went by and we watched it, it got bigger and bigger and bigger. And then finally, about 08, we could see this thing like it was across the street. And we could see that it was a blazing hot ball of fire giving out sparkles of red iron oxide dust for thousands of miles in every direction. And you could see the planet circulating it. Now, I'll tell you one thing that I really am nervous about. I think this thing's got a planet like ours circling it. This is its own solar system. We're about to have a solar system come through the middle of our solar system. This can't be good. But unfortunately, it looks as though that's what's going to happen. Hopefully nothing in this mess will hit us, even though it does say it will in the Bible, at least as it does in my Bible. It says we can expect all kinds of problems. We were looking at asteroids right close to this thing. There's asteroids that are floating around right near the, uh, that are orbiting the, uh, the main sun itself. These things appear to be about 500 miles across. And, and as you go back into the tail, you get into meteorites that go back for millions of miles in the tail. This thing looks like a giant red 
teardrop shaped dust cloud and you can see once if you if you're able to see it up close like we did you can see every speck out there i guarantee you there's trillions of meteorites following this thing now these cia people that i know say that we're not going to uh uh be that close to it when it goes past us they're saying that in order to attain breakaway speed when it comes up around the back side of the sun its speed will at least double possibly more which will put it here earlier than everybody is saying it will and uh, that this thing will probably be about 20 mi- 20 million miles from us when when it crosses in front of us and then as soon as it flips us upside down we're going to go into its debris field tail and be pelted with uh, meteorites and of course in the bible it says they will talon 70 pounds so if you've got 70 pound meteorites falling like hail and i can guarantee you they will be falling like hail because there are that many in the tail of this thing this thing has got a tail loaded with trash i mean uh it's incredible the amount of stuff that's in this thing's tail. And uh, we're going to go right through that tail. And if it doesn't beat everything on the surface of the ground into a flat putty, I don't know what it'll take. I tell everybody, you better be at least 20, 30, 40, 50 feet on the ground and have either concrete or stone above you because it'll break through the roof or whatever you've got if you don't. These CIA guys told me that this pole shift will probably happen from start to finish in around 28 minutes. That doesn't give you a lot of warning. When you see that thing out there in the sky, you're going to have to run as fast as you can to your underground facility because this is going to happen so fast. Now, see, here's another thing nobody's talking about. You've got this giant iron planet that they say is 47,000 miles across, getting ready to come up past us. And when it starts to approach us, it's going to start and have real serious effects. So is it a planet or a failed star? It's not a failed star. It, it, you know, I saw this thing up close. It did not look like a failed star. It looked just like our sun. Right. Okay. It, the, would you call our sun a failed star? No. Okay. Well, you had said planet. I wasn't sure if it was like a, a failed star brown dwarf or a full sun. So it's a full sun? It's a, it, it looks to me like a miniature sun, just like the one we have. The only difference is, see, is our sun is uh, giving off flames and stuff. And this one's doing the same thing as it, but it's giving off this red iron oxide cloud of dust around it. And until it got close, we couldn't even tell what was in there. We knew we could see it was hot, and it looked like it was just a dull red when we were first able to discern it through the red cloud. But as it approached, it started to become more apparent that this thing is just orange hot. I mean, to tell how hot it is, I was told that it was, they estimated between 5 and 10 million degrees. But, you know, I don't really know, uh, you know, uh, if that's right or not. I mean, it's got to be pretty hot because it's, it's sending all of this red iron oxide dust out into space around it. Right. And uh, it's got this enormous, and I mean enormous, the, at least... 50 or 100,000 miles on each side of it, this red dust cloud that goes all the way around it. I know when we were watching it, as it started to make the upward swing to approach behind our sun, it was amazing. The red dust cloud settled down. Instead of being around, it started to settle down into a V, like wings, upside down wings. Right. And I thought, boy, I wonder if that's where the ancient Sumerians got the idea this thing had wings, because... You know, centrifugal force is a funny thing. When it comes back up around the planet, when we see it in the sky, my guess is it's going to look like it's got wings because centrifugal force is going to be pulling the uh, red iron oxide dust and particles uh, uh, out to one side. And then uh, as it starts to climb out and go away from us, listen, I was told that this thing's magnetic field is going to be so strong, anybody that does not have a padded lead helmet to wear will have their brain gutted for everything they ever knew, and they'll be a complete raving moron after this thing passes. They'll lose their, they won't know, they'll pee in their pants. They won't have a clue what's going on, because this thing will gut their brain. And, it, and you know, I was reading a deal in my Bible. It says that uh, after this happens that nobody will uh, care because they won't be able to remember it. Well, of course, uh, I was told by somebody the reason that that is is because the electromagnetic field from this thing will be so strong because, see, as it comes up underneath of us, it's going to start and pull us toward it. 
and then just like a pair of big magnets, all of a sudden it's going to lock onto us. And when it does, it's going to be like the jolly green giant kicked the earth in the ass. It's going to send a jolt 500 to 1,000 foot high. This is what I'm told. 500 to 1,000 foot high shock waves all the way around planet Earth. They'll be so bad that in a lot of areas that don't have good solid soil, it'll fluff it so badly that you'll practically be like you're standing in quicksand. And that this thing's magnetic field will literally gut your brain of everything. And so you may want to uh, give some thoughts to getting you some sheet lead, build you a little uh, lead helmet to wear, you know, uh, like a little motorcycle helmet to protect your entire brain and, and the back of your neck so that that way this can't happen because you know, if these guys are right about this, and I'm pretty sure they are because uh, I know for a fact they know what they're talking about when they say stuff. And uh, so, you know, and, and it does sound reasonable to me, knowing what I do about electromagnetic energy, that this could happen. And it very easily could gut everybody's brain for everything they ever knew, and they'll stand there and pee in their pants and go, gee, what was that? And wow. that's if they still know how to talk. And there won't be any doubt in anybody's mind because this thing's going to look like a big red dragon exactly like all the ancient Sumerians and the Chinese and all the rest of them that had documented this thing's passing before. Uh, it didn't look like a white ball or a snow cloud or nothing. It looked like a big red iron oxide dust cloud with a superheated star in the middle of it. And, I mean, you know, and that's what we've seen. Uh, so, you know, I don't care what anybody else says. There's a possibility. There's more than one thing out there. You know, I watched it through the Hubble Space Telescope. And when this thing looked like it was uh, across the street, uh, the Hubble got cut off and they encrypted it. And that was the end of any transmissions we had to watch. And, uh, and we know that the Hubble, in order to be in the shadow of the Earth, had to be at an angle, and so that meant it was looking downward, uh, right. and this thing was coming up underneath of us, and uh, uh, I tell you the honest to God truth, I personally think this thing is real close to us right now, but, you know, that's just my general feeling that, uh, you know, and I'm a pretty psychic guy, uh, I have the feeling that this thing is right close by and that we're going to see it any time. I mean, I've been doing everything I could do to get prepared for it to... I'm, I'm really worried about what Jesus says, you know, when the fig tree is putting on its leaves, know that summer is near and I'm at your door.